employee retention credit and deferral of employer payroll taxes. We're going to start with the employee retention credit and what this is. So uh, you are, as a business, also eligible um, for an employer retention credit if you don't want to pursue the PPP loan. We'll get to that in a second. Any business that is in operation during the 2020 calendar year uh, is eligible. Your employer's, uh, the employer's business is fully or partially suspended by government order due to the COVID-19 uh, virus during the calendar quarter, or you've reached a scenario where you're still open for business, but your gross receipts have fallen below 50%. Of where they were comparable to, to the comparable quarter in 2019. And once the employer's gross receipts go above 80%, uh, you won't qualify for the credit anymore. Um, nonprofits are also eligible for this, uh, but based, just based on the uh, government shutdown order. So if, uh, and we'll get to life sustaining businesses here in a second, but uh, nonprofits are not necessarily going to qualify if they're giving, you know, if their donations or revenues have uh, decreased. And as mentioned previous, previously at the beginning, you may not be using the payroll protection program. And I'll caveat this by saying you're not going to be able to take, if you've applied for the payroll protection program and you're waiting to hear, you can't take this in the meantime until you hear back from them. So you're going to have to wait till you hear back one way or another. And if you're not accepted, then you might be eligible for this credit. So if you are a life-sustaining business and in full operation, including telework, um, I will give you an example. Our accounting firm, accounting firms are life-sustaining businesses. We have been able to successfully transition to working from home and we're in full operation. So we would not qualify for this credit, um, regardless of number of employees that will described below here. Um, we don't qualify until we meet that gross receipts, uh, gross receipts test. If we're moving, um, if we're falling below 50%, then we, would, uh, then we would be able to potentially take this. So if you are in full operation because you've been able to telework and able to transition from home, but you aren't considered a life-sustaining business, then you would qualify for this credit. Um, so I do need to make that distinction. It's the, the life sustaining and in full operation is where you would not qualify. And that's mainly because as a life sustaining business, you are then technically not under a shutdown order. So uh, partially suspended would mean that you have some, some people working and others who aren't, where everyone is working reduced hours. Um, you're staying partially open, but not at your full capacity. So think restaurants offering takeout only, contractors working some jobs because maybe the, that job is a life-sustaining business uh, or for a life-sustaining business. So they, you know, but not all their jobs are open, but maybe qualify. So if you've met the gross receipts test or your business is fully or partially suspended, then you look at an employee limit. If you are over 100 employees, you must be paying your workers while being fully shut down and the workers cannot be working. So if you're over 100 employees and you're only partially shut down and some are working and some aren't, you're actually only going to get this credit on the ones you're paying not to work. I know that kind of sounds a little backwards, but that is the way it's working. If you are under 100 employees, you must be paying your workers while being fully or partially shut down, and it doesn't matter if they're working or not. Um, the main point of emphasis, you know, as an employer, you must be paying wages. If your employees are on unemployment and you leave them there until the state is no longer under a shutdown order, you're not going to qualify for this credit when we're back to work and paying wages again. The covered period of this, it's for wages uh, beginning March 13th through December 30th is the covered period. However, Governor Wolf's shutdown order was not fully enforced until 8 p.m. on March 23rd. So March 24th through, uh, through December 31st is gonna be your eligibility period. And if you're qualifying for this, you're planning to take this um, and you wanna start with, it, most, most literature, most articles you read to make it simple are saying just start taking this uh, as of April 1st because unless your workforce substantially changed, you're, you're gonna maximize the credit probably. Um, 
But if you really want to, uh, you can apply for a refund on your first quarter payroll returns uh, if you fall into that March 24th through April 1st period. So what is the credit? The credit's gonna be 50% of the wages paid by employers due to the COVID-19 virus on the first $10,000 of qualified wages paid to an eligible employee. So it's gonna be a maximum of $5,000. Um, employee wages on this credit, they cannot exceed what they would have been during the 30 days before the period. So you can't be given hazard pay, you can't be given raises on this and get the credit for that. Um, not a lot of guidance on exactly how this piece works, but it does appear to include employees' health insurance costs. My guess is most of the time you're only providing health insurance for full-time employees and they're probably going to hit it on the wages alone, so you might not need to worry about that um, if we're, you know, especially if we're in effect for another you know, a couple months here. So how you're going to claim the credit for those of you who are at the Families First Act webinar, it's gonna work the exact same way, but, but more what this means is um, you're gonna pay your employees as you normally would, and then when you go to calculate your 941 payment, which is your federal social security and Medicare taxes, you're going to be able to reduce that liability, and that's how you're gonna claim the credit. And any amount in excess of the liability, uh, you can apply for a refund with the IRS. The IRS is saying that those refunds will take about two weeks to turn around. So if you're already paying your 941 payments weekly or bi-weekly, even monthly, you're probably just better letting the credit roll over and taking it on the next payment. Um, but you can, the 941 liability to be clear, it's for all employees you paid and, and the total. So if your total payroll, um, 941 liability for a particular period was $20,000 and you paid out 16,000 in these type of wages, you'd be able to knock that 941 payment down to $4,000. Um, if it exceeds that, which in this case, unlike the Families First Act, this case is a scenario where it could definitely exceed that. That's where you, you might be able to skip a few 941 payments until you utilize this all up. Um, Another piece you're eligible for uh, is a delay of employer payroll taxes. Um, this one, there is no limits as far as we can tell in, in on employees or anything like that. The only thing that the only eligibility qualifications are you must be a business that's remitting Social Security and you must, again, though, you cannot be utilizing the Paycheck Protection Program. So if you're getting the PPP loan, you cannot do this. Um, the date of this uh, cover period is the date of enactment through December 31st, 2020. So basically think of your social security payments through the rest of this tax year. And the amount of deferral is gonna be the employer portion of social security taxes. It does not say Medicare, it does not talk about the employee portion. So it's the employer portion of social security taxes. Um, that's gonna be eligible here. And you're simply gonna be able to defer them into 2021 and 2022. 50% uh, must be repaid by December 31st of 2021. The remaining balance paid December 31st, 2022. No guidance yet on how that, the timing of that, is it gonna be lump sums? Is it gonna be quarterly? Is it gonna be with each payroll? There's no guidance on how that repayment's gonna look. But for now, you can know, you can simply stop paying that, that employer portion um, there's no application process for this or anything. You simply just stop doing it. Um, and uh, it'll it'll kick into those years. Just a reminder, if you're going to take this, so Social Security taxes are trust fund taxes, um, meaning that you as a business owner are personally liable for them. So if you're going to take advantage of this, you got to pay. Uh, if something happens later down the road, you got to go out of business for another reason or anything like that, you're not getting out of this. So uh, keep that in mind if you're gonna if you're gonna take advantage of that. 